Shopify recently released a storefront MCP, and you might be wondering, what is that? And what can I do with it? And should I even care? Well, MCP makes it way easier for AI to interact with your Shopify store. It's kind of like providing a menu of actions that the AI can take, and it tells the AI exactly how to use them. So compare this with the previous approach using APIs, which required very structured inputs and can be very complex. So here is the documentation on using the API. It's got all these different fields that you have to set up. Um, and AI just doesn't do well with it. So as you know, AI doesn't produce consistent output each time you uh, prompt it. It might, even if the same prompt, it will give you something different. And so if there is one little small error in your API call, it just won't access the data properly. Now, that's why MCP is so powerful. Uh, it's a native way for AI agents to gather the data from your Shopify store or wherever else this MCP server uh, is built for. And it just makes your AI agents better. So this MCP server is for the storefront. Um, that means it's for any actions that you might be taking on your Shopify store, right? So if your customers are browsing your store, they might uh, they might be looking for products, they might be adding things to cart. So it's those types of things. Uh, what this doesn't do is it can't access your backend order or customer data. You can't, uh, say, edit your products. That is uh, separate from this. Um, I'm assuming that Shopify will be coming out with an MCP server for those sort of admin actions. Uh, but this one here is just for the storefront. So any actions on your Shopify store. So in this video, we're going to show you how you can test your storefront MCP. Uh, because every Shopify store now has one. Uh, this, this is what this update is. And uh, how you can use it to build your own agents in NADN. These AI agents could be customer support agents or marketing agents that can help your customers find the products that they want. So that's what we're going to look at. Let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at is the OpenAI Playground. And this is probably the easiest way to test out your MCP server. So it's really just a couple of clicks, right? So you come here, uh, tools, you say add a tool, MCP server, and then right away you can see that there's already a Shopify integration. So you hit that, and then you put in your store URL. So we can use our demo store, um, prompted demo to myshopify.com. Right, so that's our demo store here. You connect to it. Um, and then in this case, uh, I'm going to use never. This way, it just doesn't keep prompting me to confirm the information I'm sending. It'll seem more natural when we're chatting with it. And uh, let's just chat with our assistant. So I'm going to remove the monitor here. And uh, you could put a system message here um, to adjust the tone, tool usage, response style, etc. But I'm just going to say, hey, uh, what t-shirts you have available. And without having to do anything else besides connecting the tool, it can already read the information on our Shopify store and see what's available, right? It's searching through our store, finding these products, finding the price range, finding what colors are, what variants are available, right? <laughs> it's really cool. It's And it's all it took was a couple clicks of a button. So let's uh, let's just refresh here. And this actually works for basically any Shopify store. So I could go here, MCP server, and let's say, for example, uh, let's go to Gymshark, right? You can connect to Gymshark, and you could basically do the same thing, right? Uh, let's go never add. And we can ask uh, what... Uh, what are your best sellers? Let's find out. And it's going to search the catalog. Okay, so it couldn't retrieve a specific list. Okay, let's let maybe let's ask something a little bit different. So, um, what leggings do you have? 
maybe maybe it couldn't really find a bestseller uh, item on there, but you know, you ask for specific products, it's going to find these leggings that are for sale on shop uh, on the Gymshark website, right? So, if you can imagine, you can start building AI agents that allows your customers to. Uh, shop directly with the agent because you can pass that information right back to them. So, very cool, very cool. Um, now, this is in the OpenAI Playground uh, area, right? So, if you wanted to actually build this into your own agent, um, you would have you can access the, some of the code here, and it kind of shows you the history of the code that was being used, um, but we like to use NADN to build our AI agents. So let's hop into NADN. And this is an example of what your AI agent would look like when you connect it to the Shopify MCP server. Very simple, right? Just a few connections, and you already have full access to the Shopify storefront via the MCP server. Now, there is a bit of a caveat here. Um, at the time of recording, this MCP client node is incompatible with the Shopify uh, MCP server. Now, there is an update coming, right? So this GitHub uh, pull request is basically saying, hey, please update the client node so that it is compatible with the newer version of how MCP uh, servers like to communicate, which is uh, an HTTP streamable transport, right? Right now, it uses... SSE. Now, that's not important. You don't need to know how that all works. But basically, what this means is um, they don't speak to each other properly. <laughs> it's incompatible. Uh, but this is this change is coming, right? Like they're already talking about it. They're working on it. So hopefully, in the very very new near future, uh, that will be uh, implemented. In fact, at the time of recording, the the trigger node, the MCP trigger node. Um, so this one right here, this already, uh, with, I think the latest beta versions has been implemented. So this should be coming soon, right after that, um, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Uh, but in the time being, uh, I kind of built a workaround, right? So the workaround looks sort of like this. It's not too much more complicated, but we have to use, uh, two different HTTP requests. Um, and so one to capture the available tools and the other one to actually call the tools. So um, it's not as elegant as just using one MCP client and um, probably has some other intricacies, intricacies where it doesn't work quite as well, uh, but it kind of does the job um, based on my little testing. Now, even here, compare this to a... Uh, an agent that we showed previously, which was a customer uh, support agent, right? So this, you can see here, there's a lot more nodes going on. There's a lot more things going on. I mean, part of this is just getting, say, for example, the Gmail uh, emails coming in so that the AI agent can read it. But you can see here some of the tools that are available here. So you've got a, a Shopify node, and then you've got this sub workflow, which opens up to this here, where you've got even more HTTP request nodes, which are to get data from Shopify, right? So there's all these different Shopify nodes being called, and I have to specify them using the API. So there's, it gets a lot more complicated is all I'm trying to say. Um, but here, when it's, uh, sorry, right here, when uh, this client is compatible, uh, really simplifies things down, right? You've just got a few different connections and you're already able to talk to Shopify. Now, like I said earlier, um, this node is only for the storefront, right? So it's not exactly the same as what's happening here where we're actually looking at order data and customer data. So um, they're not equivalent, but when Shopify drops their MCP uh, server for handling order data and customer data. At least hopefully they will drop that in the future. Uh, I don't know exactly what their uh, roadmap looks like, but I'm hoping that th that will come in the future. Then all you have to do is connect that one 
MCP server using an MCP client node here. Just It's just one connection. And you get access to all of that, uh, all those tools from Shopify. And as they add more tools, you don't have to do anything, right? Because it's all handled by the MCP server. So that's the power of the of these MCP servers is it gives you access to Shopify with a single connection, right? And when they update things, you don't have to do anything, right? You just chat with the AI agent and it just knows how to uh, get the information, right? So let's, uh, let's just test it out, right? So we can come here. And we can say, what shirts do you have available, right? And it's going to go through and it's going to uh, list out some shirts, right? There we go, right? Kind of like what we saw earlier with the playground. You see, um, you see some prices, you see titles, and you see images. Okay, so let's take a look at how we set this up. First off, we have our trigger. In this case, we have a basic... Uh, chat trigger. Uh, normally, we use uh, Slack to trigger, or we can use Gmail, like in this, uh, in the case of this customer support agent. But we're just testing the MCP server itself, so I just kept this simple and used a, a chat trigger. Uh, next, we have our AI agent, right? So we're just getting the chat input, and then we have um, a basic system prompt here, just saying, "Hey, we've got two tools." We have our list MCP tool, and we've got our call MCP tool. The list MCP tool will tell you what tools are available and what arguments should be used with it. Uh, and the call MCP tool takes that information and makes the call. So um, we open this one up. We have our list MCP tool, right? We're calling our uh, our MCP server, right? It's it's going to be your store domain uh, slash API slash MCP. So that's how you access it. Um, you don't need any authentication because the storefront API, um, your it's, it's like as if you're just browsing the website and so you're, you're a normal customer, so you don't actually need to be authenticated. Um, and then we just send a JSON body. It's just sort of a basic empty body just saying that we want to get the tools list. Right, and that's basically it. And when you make that call, it returns all of this text here. Uh, and what it's saying is, okay, well, first you have this tool here, search shop catalog, uh, and then it tells you what it does, and then it tells you what uh, arguments are required. Um, so here's the input schema, right? So this is what needs to be fed in with your tool, right? It's basically just telling us uh, this information right here, right? Like this, this information here. But it's doing it so that the the AI agent itself knows what structure to use. Okay. Uh, and then next, you call the MCP, right? So it's the same thing. You use the same URL. Uh, it's a post method, just like the previous one. No authentication again. And then you have a body that you get, that you sent. And so in here, we're basically just building out the, the, the name. So it's the, the tool you're using and the arguments uh, using AI, right? So AI will determine what those should be. And then you, uh, and then we just place it in, in, uh, in here to pass it to the AI. So um, then we have our open AI chat model, right? We're using GPT 4.1. Um, you can always use a different model if you like. Um, I just found that using 4.1 was pretty good for this. Uh, and then um, we've got a little memory for the AI agent so that it can kind of keep track of the chat. So pretty basic, um, but that's how we set it up. Now, there's a few things to keep in mind here. This uh, agent here using the MC MCP server isn't perfect. Uh, when using it in the playground or using it here, uh, I have found that it has been a little bit inconsistent, right? So say, for example, um, we got these products here, but then we want to add the products to cart. I found sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, right? So there's sort of inconsistency. Um, 
And that happens both with this template flow here that you can see, or in uh, the playground. Like in both cases, it is inconsistent. Now, I think it can be improved, right? So we can build more structure around um, these tools so that uh, we use better prompting or we create additional nodes to kind of help the AI agent structure things properly, grab the right tools. But doing all of that starts to defeat the purpose of having the MCP server kind of figure it all out for you. But in any case, it does make it much easier to access these tools. So even if you have to do some of these um, additional methods, uh, I think it's still easier than trying to access everything via API. And as time goes on, uh, things are just going to improve, right? So N8N is going to make their MCP client compatible with the Shopify MCP server by uh, making it HTTP streamable. Um, Shopify is going to continue to update their uh, MCP server. So hopefully we'll see more tools, including tools that will access the backend of your Shopify store. So, um, things will just get better and better and easier and easier to use, right? Um, so that's the Shopify storefront MCP. And I hope that helped give you an idea of what it's for. And if you like what you saw in this video and want to get support with building Shopify AI agents, or you want to try your systems and tools to scale your Shopify store, then just check out the link in the description for a trial of the entry-level tier of our program. But that's it for today. I'll see you in the next one.